Hello again, Pastor Michael Jarbo here. Welcome to another edition of Soul Care, conversations to help renew the spirit. I'm glad you're here. Check out today's episode. Well, hello again, and welcome to another edition of Soul Care. This is Pastor's Edition with the one and only Reverend Colin Bagby, friends. Reverend Hi, Colin Bagby, how are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you? I'm not going to call you Reverend Colin. Maybe I should for now on, just Reverend, Reverend Colin. Bagby. Yeah. Rolls off the tongue. If you want to, that's, you, you do you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, truth is, I've been getting a few emails about the soul cares, and people have a couple have written in and said, Hey, why don't you do this with the pastors and like get a little bit more inside scoop? And so yeah. I said, That's a fantastic idea. And uh, you are first at bat, my friend, just reaching awesome. out to you. And, and it's, uh, I feel like I have to be a little more formal with other folks, but me and you, we're just, we're just kicking yeah. it, palling around. <laughs> Two guys hanging out. Okay. What's better than this? Just guys being dudes. <laughs> just guys being... See, you've always wanted to use that, and now you always, have always, a real yeah. option of doing so. Uh-huh. All right, so we're going to ask you a few questions, uh, my friend, and I'd love to hear We're going to end with the Michael Jarbo Rapid 11. All and right. There's questions, bing, 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 that will just I'll fire. One or two word answers. That's right. Keep it quick. Okay. Keep it cool. quick. But the, time, the clock's on you. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So first question, my friend, is um, I just want to hear first, and, and I think some people have gotten to hear it in your sermons or if you've ever spoken mm-hmm. to Sunday school classrooms and you have a deep connection with Alpha, which is awesome, um, and, and leading that. But why don't you share a little bit about your call story, about how you kind of understood um, your role to play in the kingdom of God and, and, and really just how how'd you get your start? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think central to my call story is that even though I didn't know it at the time, I had some uh, mentors and kind of people ahead of me that I really looked up to and uh, really wanted to like model my life after. So my best friend growing up, Taylor, his dad was my pastor Uh, and kind of one of those like... um, Uh, anomaly United Methodist pastors that he stayed at our church, I think for 14 years, um, which is a long time for a United Methodist pastor. And he, uh, he left right before our senior year in high school. So like my best friend left to like right before our senior year in high school. Yeah. And, uh, but I, you know, I spent a lot of time. There were some summers I was like at the Yoakum's house, like every single day. Um, and so it had a, an impression on me. I think one of the things that really started to call me to ministry, I, I say this, I've been saying this a lot recently, and I think you know this when you're thinking about your call story, like it's all in retrospect and you start to see the pieces differently as your life goes on. Oh my God. Um, and I kind of look back now and think my call story is selfish in some way because I, or at least self-centered that someone, even in a time like I grew up in church, and I played in like a Christian band at one point, and like I, you know, was kind of in the environment. I was, I would say, I wasn't like super religious, and even into college, like I was involved in um, the like uh, religious life of the of the college. But I um, was started started to realize that you know what 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 had been shared with me, this good news about who Jesus is and what Jesus had done for us. Um, was something that I really needed to hear. And I was hearing it from a place of like, I wasn't really cool in high school, if you can believe it. No, <laughs> like I can't. wasn't. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. Like, Stop uh, lying on camera. Right, uh-huh. Colin. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I know, I know, I know there's people out there that like me that like, it's one of those things, you know, uh, you go on a mission trip and you have that person in your group, you're at a place where somebody doesn't speak the same language as you and their way to get across to the other person is just to speak English louder. Um, That's kind of how I felt I received my call is that like I'd been called and called and called and called and called and then somebody just said just a little bit louder and a little bit clearer like you can tell other people about this. Um, And so that's kind of the short of it. I, uh, you know, like I said, I played in bands all through high school and college and always with uh, this kind of messaging of you are worth something, you have infinite value, God loves you and cares about you. 
Um, and there's a point now in that retrospect sort of thing that I'm looking back like, oh, we were saying this to people, but uh, I was also saying it to myself and I was hearing it anew every time uh, we, we said that message. And so, yeah, that, and that's kind of the, the like uh, overview of it. But yeah, I had some people ahead of me that really kind of pointed to some gifts I had and, and really pulled those out of me. And then also that kind of selfish motivation that there are people that were just like me that needed to just hear it again, a little clearer and a little louder. Um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of how I tell it now. Awesome. No, very good. And the, the, I totally reflect uh, with you in regards to just, as you look back, you see the pieces coming together yeah. and it's wild. I, I'm right. envious of our colleagues and friends that have had this, like, even for some folks, like an audible voice or something. That was like, <laughs> right. You, Bob, will be a pastor. You know, I didn't have that. I wish I did. Uh, mm -hmm. Because there, honestly, there are some days I wake up and I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm a pastor. <laughs> like here I am. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was kind of, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time or whatever? Like it was just, it was kind of progressive little, little bit at a time, kind of re a realization, a progressive realization. So. Yeah, or you're having to make a tough, having to make a tough phone call, or yeah. you're about to walk into a tough situation in the hospital room, and you're like, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. Yeah. Okay, it's me. Here, here we go. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Been there. Been there. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, before we move on to the next question, uh, I gotta know your band name. You were in. A, you were in. Well, I was in a few different ones. I was in a band called uh, the Menial. M E N I A L. Okay. It was like a. I think maybe I just like saw that word. I was like, that sounds kind of cool. Uh, pick that. Uh, I was in a band uh, called, uh, there, my friend Taylor had these like, his mom had these like framed print, of, like Italian things, like of, like an ad for pasta sauce and then like an ad for something. And like they were in the kitchen or like near the kitchen. They were kind of, you know, uh, very like mom decor. And one of them said uh, Pinna Aurora on them, which I'm pretty sure was like a pasta sauce. And we thought that was really cool. Uh, so we had a we had a band called Pinna Aurora at one time. Uh, the last band I was in was called The Fountainhead, uh, okay. which is like you know that Ayn Rand book that I've not read uh, and don't care to honestly. Uh, but uh, we thought that sounded cool. So yeah, yeah, there are a handful, but those are some of the highlights. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. You named yourself off after pasta sauce, and I yeah, uh -huh. that. pretty cool. I, I love that. That's yeah. cool. good uh -huh. stuff. Okay, next question. Uh, I, I shared uh, we had the little. Um, devotional this morning at our yeah. church and I shared that uh, an African proverb from the book Tattoos on the Heart uh, which is just a great read um, and that says a person becomes a person through other people a person becomes a person through other people and I love the simplicity of it but it's so expansive who uh, for you Colin is someone that made a significant impact in your life I know you talked about your pastor uh, who was your dad's best uh, sorry your best your friend's, friend's dad yeah best friend's yeah. dad yeah yeah so uh but but i mean or speak a little bit more to him or is there somebody else that comes to mind yeah mackie is definitely one but the people that come to mind one i'd say like my grandmother my dad's mom uh we called her b her name is billy um she always had this like saying she'd say like remember who you are and my dad would say that to me like especially if i was in trouble like, you know, remember who you are, like your identity, like, and, it, and at the time it was obnoxious, uh, but now it's one of those things that it's really, you know, sunken deep into who I am. And I always think about her um, when I kind of feel like I'm in trouble or that um, I've kind of lost myself and kind of recenter myself on remember who you are. That's somebody that I knew personally. And then another person that just um, like a handful of year, years ago kind of became I don't know, uh, like guiding post for like having character and being a good person and um, living by my principles is Bobby Kennedy. Um, and I've kind of been obsessed with learning more about Bobby Kennedy and, you know, Chris Matthews had a book about him came out, came out a few years ago, but uh, just as someone who was just like doggedly committed to their ideals and someone who across the political aisle had admirers, uh, you know, we lost too soon was just this amazing public figure that had to announce to a crowd um, of black people that uh, MLK had been shot. So this like, you know, um, kind of dorky um, Catholic man you to know, get I up and tell I've seen that video. I think I've seen yeah, the video. Yeah. Oh. Pretty incredible. So uh, anyway, yeah, uh, Bobby Kennedy is just, you know, uh, just a kind of ideal kind of uh, figure for me. So cool. yeah. awesome.
And I, I feel like you maybe even preached some about Bobby Kennedy. Yeah, I, I can't help but mention him sometimes. <laughs> and he has this quote I like to use a lot. When Chris Matthews had the book come out about him that he wrote, uh, Stephen Colbert had Chris Matthews on. And um, he read this quote that Stephen Colbert has a like a paperweight on his desk with this quote. And it's this beautiful quote about, you know, we, we, we drop something and there's a ripple. And if we all start to make ripples, then these waves can break down the walls of oppression. And he, wow. you know, that's paraphrasing it, but says it much more eloquently than I could. But yeah, it's really moving. Um, I, in some ways sort of folksy. I mean, he was from this kind of rich family, but he, right. he wasn't as well-spoken as his brother. He was kind of funny looking like, but he had this really powerful set of values and character. And so, yeah, I kind of, yeah, the sort of person I want to be. Awesome. Yeah. Grandma and Bobby Kennedy, two yeah. very good answers. Mm -hmm. Okay, switching up a little bit uh, subject wise, I want uh, you to just talk a little bit about your spouse. How would you yeah. describe Landon Sean Bagby? I used her, and that's her, Sean is her maiden name? But Middle Sean name. is her middle name. Middle name. Sean okay. is her, her middle name. Yeah. Middle name. So it's funny. Uh, this is like a side note. When I went to my first church in Arkansas, uh, my senior pastor there uh, wanted to make sure that there was a picture included of us. Uh -huh. uh, so they would, people would not think that she was a man. Um, so, you know, the kind of environment I was going into. Uh, but Landon is her mom's last name. And so that's also really confusing. Like gotcha. Her mom's name is Jennifer Landon and her first name is Landon. So, and then all of her mom's side of the family, their last name is Landon and it's her first name. So that's a really uh, fun, confusing situation sometimes. But uh, <laughs> to describe her, I'd say that uh, she's absolutely the funniest person I've ever known. Uh, just can always really get me. Um, funniest person I've ever, know, I've ever known. And also I would say a couple more things that are really central to her mm -hmm. and to our relationship is one, um, maybe you get this with Leslie all, um, kind of, she'll say like, what are you preaching about when I'm preaching? And I'll tell her and she'll be like, um, try, a, try that again. <laughs> maybe <laughs> step back a little bit. There was this one time when we were living in Atlanta that we went to a wedding and I was preaching the next morning and she yeah. was like, Hey, like, I know you're preaching. Like, how are you feeling about it? And I told her, she was like, Oh no. And it was like midnight. <laughs> she was like, you're going to have to, you're going to have to do something else. Like that's not going to work. So she really has a critical eye. She sees things better than I can see oh, them. Oh, same, um, dude, same, yes. She, yes. she doesn't have a high tolerance for, for my BS. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I appreciate that. And that, and also um, uh, she gives people the benefit of the doubt, whereas sometimes I can, I might jump to judgment or jump to criticism. Um, and she's just a kind, tender, loving person, compassionate person. And obviously, I strive to be that way, but um, she can sometimes see where I get a little frustrated with folks that she can bring me down and, and help me see, I would say see people as God wants us to see them, which is that kind of tender, uh, uh, loving gaze. So yeah, I appreciate it about her, but also Definitely. funny. Could do stand up, I swear. I, okay, all right, yeah. I like to hear that for sure. Yeah. Um, good answer. All right, so let me, uh, you talked about funny. We're gonna jump into yeah. it. I've got, I want you to highlight two ministry moments first okay. one highlight for me maybe uh you know ministry you know that, that like i am a pastor moment also mm -hmm. engages our mind to think about those moments where we've either been in in over our head or found ourselves in funny places or yeah. someone made a funny comment so what what's been one of the funnier moments of your uh, ministry thus far as a pastor in the methodist church mm. Two funny ones come to mind. One involves Landon. So it was my first Sunday at my first church and um, I had just got done preaching and my senior pastor wanted to introduce us okay. and uh, she made Landon stand up in front of everyone and like everyone clapped for her. My mic was still on um, and I said to the person standing next to me who I knew from college actually was at this church that Landon hated stuff like that. <laughs> like being, and my mic was on. Um, and I might have used a little more colorful language, to be honest. Uh, but uh, luckily, the clapping, I think only a few people heard me. Because okay. I only ever heard about it from a couple of people. Oh, my pretty God. Funny. The other one that comes to mind is one I shared, actually, in a sermon at Memorial Drive. Oh. Was that we we sold one of our church vans. Oh, I know. And it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the decal came off, but it was still visible in certain light. And our church van ended up at uh, the local... Um, gentlemen's club 
and uh, we got some phone calls about that. So that's it was stressful at the time, hilarious now. Yeah. <laughs> those are the two funniest moments. And there, you know, as you know, there's always a, a new funny thing every week. But those are the highlights. I think. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's good. Oh, mm -hmm. the mic being on can get you mm -hmm. in trouble uh, yeah. for sure. All right, switching a little bit more serious. So, what for you has been one of the more um, powerful moments uh, yeah. in history, something that you've witnessed or experienced? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot, there's many. And again, it's one of those things sometimes I don't realize how powerful it was or what an impact it had on me until much later. Uh, but um, baptizing my nephew um, was probably one of the heavier ones, just that. Um, you know, I baptized dozens of babies and then to baptize him and to say those things over him and to like, you know, ask my sister and her husband to kind of commit to uh, discipling him like that whole experience and just my, all my extended family was there and everything. And it was kind of just felt like a culmination that these people, they kind of, kind of supported me into going into ministry. And now I'm um, the kind of this, there's this continuity, this thread that, you know, God is with all of us. And so that was really powerful. Um, and then just like, uh, just broadly, there's been many instances uh, of this, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny thing, actually, you work really, really hard on a sermon, and nobody gives you any comments or praise about it. And then maybe just to be <laughs> frank, you don't put as much into one as you ought to, and you get a lot of praise for it. Right. Um, and there's some beautiful moments where years later, months later, someone says, hey, Colin, like, I was going through this rough time, and I remembered when you said X. Yeah. Um, and just am thankful to God that he uses somebody like me to say something that might even, and it's even better when they quote it back to you, and you, you know you didn't say it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you're like, uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, I remember that. Uh, Great, uh, yeah. Uh, but in the when book. somebody, somebody carries something, that I had a man come to me in my last church. I had preached a sermon about um, sadness and grief, and I talked about crying and how I'm not a crier. Um, and I think part of it is this kind of cultural expectation that men shouldn't cry. And I, for some reason, carry that around. And I said, so like, I kind of was giving an affirmation to men in the congregation, like, it's okay to cry and you're not weak to cry, you know? And I had this like rugged old man in our church, like come tell me how much it meant to him that he, I said it was okay for him to cry because he says he always cries in private and he does it a lot. <laughs> and so uh, just really powerful moment there too so wow I'm, I'm reminded of, of a, both a powerful moment and a funny moment with you in ministry okay uh, <laughs> so you uh preach a sermon I think also on grief not too long ago yeah um and a, a member in our congregation who had recently lost uh, a child mm -hmm. um happened to come to church that uh, week and I got the longest email in the world from her or maybe it was a phone call just saying how like she just was she just didn't have the strength to get to church but mm -hmm. she did it anyways and she was like wondering like why am i going to church i'm not ready she heard mm -hmm. your sermon and it was just so poignant and powerful and beautiful to her it just made it and she was like please pass i don't know him well enough to say like anything right now can you pass along and i was like sure and so then there was a sunday i think not a few long, few weeks after that where I saw her again, and it was after Sunday I preached, she had come and just say, great sermon, and, and she goes, oh my gosh, there's Colin who preached that sermon that was so poignant and powerful to me, and I just needed what to hear in my grief and my heart, and we just both looked over at you, and I think you were just doing like a little dumb dance or face or something, and I was like, oh my god, this guy. That's me, Pastor Colin. <laughs> Always keeping it professional. It's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like you got the, you got like the, the thing in the tooth when you're like, ah, uh -huh. you know, yeah. that was like uh -huh. that moment of like, mm -hmm. oh, God bless him. He has no idea. He's like getting like a beautiful compliment, but it's, mm -hmm. uh, that's ministry though, dude. It was yeah. so good. So that's one thing I'll, I'll always try to be authentic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and people can see through uh, bull, right? Uh -huh. and so totally, totally. It's cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, before we get to the, rapid fire round uh -huh. um last question just checking in on you buddy uh methodist uh founder john wesley would often ask um his fellow pastors um how is it with your soul and so from one pastor to another i just want to mm -hmm. check in and say how is it with your soul how are you doing during the season yeah. uh i think you know uh thankfully i'm i'm okay I'm not like the best I've ever been, obviously, but 
you know, soul wise, I, I, you mentioned this in your sermon, maybe a week ago, or two weeks ago, like you, you look for the silver lining to a fault. Um, and I, I'm in, I'm in the same boat in some way, but maybe more so in the, like, what can I get out of this? Like what create, what can I do or produce or whatever? Um, and to a fault, like it's okay to not, you know, make something and try to, you know, produce or whatever, like just you do your work and, and weather the storm with everybody else. And that's fine. And you're enough. And that's something I'm always kind of struggling with myself is am I enough? Yeah. Uh, but um, I am finding the, the monotony and like the drudgery really difficult. Um, and that's kind of hard on my soul because I, I kind of like novelty and like, you know, trying new things and seeing new places and people. And um, I think we're similar in that way, Mike. Uh, and just the kind of day in day out like um, going you know I go to the same room every day and go do this you know and that's wearing that's definitely wearing and so that's exhausting Uh, but uh, you know other than that you know it's kind of I feel like it's kind of middle of the road uh, and but I am appreciative like I do have more like quiet time I mentioned in a daily word not that long ago like the opportunity to kind of read portions of script, longer portions of scripture and stuff and how, how great that's been. Uh, but it would be nice to not, you know, to not be in this situation to kind of force that. Right. Uh, but, um, you know, I, a lot more, you know, one-on-one time with Landon is, is really great and cooking a lot more, which we've always kind of aspired to do. Uh, but uh, now I have to, and so that's good. Uh, but anyway, doing all right, man. Cool. Thanks for checking in. I'm mm-hmm. praying for you, my brother. And now I gotta pray for you because it's time for Michael right. Jarbo's Rapid Eleven question time. Now I say it's Michael Jarbo's Rapid Eleven, but it is a combination of Brene Brown's question <laughs> she asked during her unlocking us. Uh, I borrow from her. All I the borrow. Time. Borrow. Yeah. Right. You, <laughs> old, old Saint Br- Saint Brene Brown, as we yeah. call her. Uh-huh. Uh, and then also another um, a podcast called. Have you heard of um, Great? Uh, crackers and grape juice I have yeah Mm -hmm. okay yeah the last question is in in connection with that one so it's a little bit of a a blur but these are some of my favorite rapid fire questions so here we go question number one fill in the blank Colin ministry is Uh, just a series of difficult conversations Borrowing from Will Willimon. There is. The same thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, that's not called that. I've yeah. heard that before. But he's right. <laughs> but he's right. Right. But yeah. he's right. Uh-huh. That's good. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Number two, uh, you're called to be brave, but your fear is real. What do you do first? Uh, gotta, gotta quote Jason Isbell, new record. He has a song called Be Afraid. And the hook is be afraid, be very afraid, uh, but do it anyway. And so I think kind of leaning into the fear and repurposing it into uh, energy. So it's kind of, you know, pro- probing the fear rather than running away from it to kind of get closer to it. So I think I'd probably, you know, to answer that kind of deep philosophical question, uh, lean into the fear, why do I feel it? And then use it. Oh, you're telling me I got to listen to this, Jason. Uh, Isabel album. I'm going to do it. I promise. Do it. After this interview, I'll put it on. Oh, good. Uh, really good. Number three, um, something people often get wrong about you. Yeah. Uh, I think, so I've been told uh, before, so I'm working on this, uh, that I can seem kind of like cold or intimidating or aloof. Uh, like one first, on, like I, I don't smile a lot and that's because I'm not happy. Like I'm typically smiling and laughing on the inside. Uh, and so I think sometimes I have like a resting just sort of like, I look like I'm mad, but I'm not. And you know, like I'm, I, I like to joke around, a yeah, kind of dry sense of humor. And so yeah. I think, yeah. yeah, on the front end, I was told by someone in college, you know, who's a good friend now, that they were scared of me the first time they met oh, me. I'm like, I assure you, I'm not intimidating. Uh, and I like people and I like to talk and right. I might be aloof. I might be somewhere else, but you can bring me back. So... <laughs> There's nothing scary about you, Colin, my friend. Well, that's good. Uh, thank uh, you. Good. Uh, last TV show you binge watched? I think you know. Uh, uh, Friday Night Lights. It's, uh, one of Landon's favorites. I'd never seen it before. And okay. we are, we're not, we're almost done with the fifth season, which is the last season. Michael B. Jordan. Oh. Young Michael B. Jordan. Great. Uh, it's a great, great show. 
um, character driven. I really enjoy it. So yeah. And okay. Texas, very Texas, Texas. forever. Texas yeah, forever. Texas forever. Um, favorite movie. This is going to be a tough one for you. Yeah, favorite movie. Yeah, I'm a huge. I'm a huge movie buff. So I read this question in a particular way. I hope that's okay. That's fine. My favorite movie right now uh, is Parasite. Uh, that's one best picture. Um, yeah. Incredible, incredible. I went and saw it with a couple of friends, and uh, for like two weeks after, we were texting back and forth every day about like just things we remembered or noticed, and just the impact it had. It it's on Hulu right now. Uh, great movie, Parasite. But I love movies, so are you yeah, being it's paid? Hard to pick. You're being paid by the movie. <laughs> yeah, by Hulu. Yeah, I wish <laughs> by Hulu. They got some <laughs> money to spare. Uh, uh, a concert that you'll never forget. Uh, uh, Donald Glover is also known as Childish Gambino, uh, a rapper. And when his uh, album Because the Internet was coming out, he did uh, three man shows, one in LA, one in New York City, and one in Atlanta. And it was while I lived in Atlanta. You could enter to win tickets and Landon and I saw Childish Gambino play in a man show. And it was awesome. Yeah. I know. Like, I was like five feet. I was like, I was like six feet away from him. It was awesome. I, I, you've already told me that story because yeah. I think we've listened to Childish Gambino together uh -huh. in the mm -hmm. car before, but it is, um, man, I'm, just, I'm continually impressed by that one. I don't know mm -hmm. if I have one that competes. That's pretty, pretty nice. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Next question. A snapshot of a moment in your life that brings you joy. Uh, there's one of my favorite pictures I have is of uh, Landon and our dog Montgomery uh, the day we adopted her and it looked like Landon smiling really big and it looks like Montgomery smiling really big because we just rescued her and it kind of it's like a point in my life where one we got a dog and you know I love my dog and two it was like um, less than a month after we got married so just a really oh, wow. happy exciting time of our lives and uh, kind of starting out on our careers and everything and the uh, uh, you know, with Landon and Montgomery and just that period of my life brings me a lot of joy just thinking about it. So. Awesome. What's on your bedside table? Uh, a stack of books, a uh, half drunk glass of water, uh, and a lamp. <laughs> hey, what's on the top of that? This is a bonus question. Boop, boop, bonus. What's on the top of the stack of books? Uh, right now, on top of that stack of books is uh, Renovation of the Heart by Dallas Willard. Ooh, okay. Big Dallas Willard fan. Awesome. Um, great book, yeah. All right. Tell me one thing that you're deeply grateful for right now. Mm. Mm. Well, uh, my twin sister just had a baby. Uh, oh, yeah. So I'm grateful for, for new life and that even when things are very different, some things still happen and so new life still happens and there's a lot to 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 look out for and so i'm grateful for that and then by extension grateful for my family and and the kind of um, connections that have kind of come back up um because of all this so to wrap up the rapid 11 questions colin bagby pastor colin bagby what do you hope is the first thing that god says when you reach heaven i want i don't want i want God to, I just hope it's laughter. I hope that when uh, uh, I get there that uh, God is just laughing. Uh, not at me, I hope not at me. Maybe, well, maybe at me. Uh, but just thinking about like how seriously I could take things and the things I thought were important and then kind of this culmination of, of the things that matter still lasting and the things that don't going away. And so I, I imagine God will laugh and, and make me feel right at home. Awesome. Great job. You passed the rap of 11. Good. Well done. And thank you for joining me on Soul. Yeah. Share, my brother. Thank you, Michael. You're Thanks welcome. Doing this. All right. We'll talk to you soon, friend. Take All care. Right. Later. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for checking out Soul Care. Join us again next week at noon on Friday. Have a great weekend. Bye.